so going back to the drums, I'm gonna start adding the different elements of the drums, specifically, you know, the kick and the snare. And I'm gonna be adding the different plugins and we, we're gonna be able to see what they're actually doing. Here we have one of the kicks, it's called Kick Card. I was actually adding more low end to this track. This is quite a dangerous plugin, I have to say. I mean, I love it, but it qualifies as a dangerous plugin. You can blow any any woofer with this with this plugin. Then I added some samples to it. This is the sample by itself. I'm gonna add some SPL Transient Designer, some compression, some EQ after the compression, and then some additional EQ after the compression. There are some specific types of EQ that I use just for subtracting, and I don't truly use much for adding things to a mix or adding things to a specific track in the mix. Each EQ has an area of excellence to me. Like, for example, you know, either in the analog world or all of the emulations in the, in the digital world as plugins. For example, if you use a Helios and you hit that very low end, it has a very specific type of distortion that brings something to the table. The same with the very, very high end on the Helios. I mean, it, it truly is magic. It has that factor to the, <laughs> to the sound. But for example, if you add some of the older school Klein and Hummel UE100 type of EQ, it's just quite the opposite. If you add some of the UE100 low end, if you go too far, you distort in a very specific kind of way. But if you go with normal, you know, no, normally adding like four or six dBs of low end, it's very soft. It is very, very soft so sounding. So for example, for a kick like this, I will never use that, or I will very rarely use that, because it has a very wide curve and it's, it's very soft sounding. You know, it's not, it doesn't have that kind of grunge to the sound. As far as the extra kick I use, it was an 808 that I just added myself. And let's see what processing I applied to it. I actually, I lowered the decay of the 808 quite a bit. Then I was doing nothing with this plugin. And then I actually was doing something more dramatic with an uh, isotope plugin where I was adding some EQ. Do you know, see here in 5K, do you know 2.5K an app? I was actually getting some of that extra kick element to it. So then uncompressing quite a bit and maximizing slightly. And then after that, I actually had another, you know, expander to even further, you know, get rid of the tail of the, of the sound. With the snare, I'm basically doing, you know, the filter freak thing I told you about, and I'm doing full mix. It brings something electronic to the sound. It's very subtle, but it is something like, something almost harmonizing sound, kind of like a harmonizer. It's kind of weird. And I'm not compressing anything. I'm just EQing slightly, you know, a little bit of a hundred here. Because the rest of the compression that I was adding to this snare sound, is actually happening on the SSL. So in this case, uh, for the drums, I will naturally look for more compression on them look for more of that snappy type of compression, but I didn't do it with plugins. In this case, for example, with the snare. And the same with the kick, you know, there is some of the kick going to a different one. I'm going through the distressors. If you can, if you can tell, you know, I'm going through the distressors and adding some of that distressor into the snare sound on the SSL, coming back to the SSL. <laughs> 